Hi, my name is Guy Cotter from Adventure Consultants in New Zealand. Today we're going to talk about what mountaineering equipment you will bring to New Zealand to climb in the Southern Alps. So this is some of the equipment that we use in New Zealand. There's a wide variety of equipment here to cater to all the different types of conditions we have. What we're going to do is we're going to go through all this gear, we're going to pack it into my backpack ready to go. What we have here is a 65 litre backpack, which is going to be big enough to carry all our gear around while we're climbing here in New Zealand. We want a backpack that's going to be able to carry all our gear, uh, not too big because they become heavier as they get bigger, and not too small, something like a 35, 45 litre pack, maybe too small to fit all the gear in that we have here. So what are the features we're looking for in a backpack? First of all, we're looking for a backpack with a nice carrying system. That includes a nice solid rigid back uh, and also some very good uh, pack straps that are going to be supportive. Uh, that system is supported by some stabilizing straps up the top here which hold the pack forward. You've also got a sternum strap in the middle. We also want to have a really nice hip belt. Those of course are supported with a good buckle. And this straps around you and gives you support with the pack while you're carrying it. Moving around to the front of the pack, we want to make sure it's a single compartment as much as possible. That's certainly my preference where everything goes into the pack. There's no zippers that might break during the duration of a climbing trip. We need to have uh, ice axe attachment points, two of them, one for your ice axe and one for your ice hammer. And of course these are attached up the top. We'll see a bit more of that later on. The top pocket of your pack is one of the most important parts of the whole pack because we just all tend to just throw everything into the top pocket of our pack. One of the things I like about this particular pack is that you've got a zip compartment at the top and you've also got one underneath and that way we can organize the stuff that we need to be uh, able to get to as quickly as possible. We also have compression straps on the side that we can make the pack smaller if we don't have a full load thereby avoiding having all the gear in the bottom of the pack. Now this pack is going to be what we use to carry our gear in, it's also going to be used for when we're doing our climbing so we want to make sure that one pack does it all. We're not able to carry a pack for climbing and a pack for walking in with, otherwise it ends up just being too much weight. So now we're going to look at sleeping bags because this is going to be the first thing that we put into the bottom of our pack. Sleeping bags come in all sorts of weights and temperature ratings. In New Zealand we want something that's not going to be too warm because often in our alpine environment, in the summertime anyway, it's quite hot at night. So the features that we're looking for in a sleeping bag one that's made out of down preferably because down is lighter than a synthetic bag. You want to have it the mummy shape so it's got a nice hood on the top of it and a zip that goes pretty well all the way down the bag or at least three quarters of the way down. Now as you can see with this bag it's not lofted up and this is the thing about down you take the sleeping bag out and loft up after a little while. When we're packing a sleeping bag away, we put it into a compression sack, one that has straps on the side preferably, so that when it's all packed up we can squeeze it down so it's nice and tight. So when you're packing a sleeping bag, you actually just stuff it into the compression sack. You don't need to roll it up or anything like that, you just stuff it in there slowly and gently. You don't want to do it too hard because you might break some of the internal baffles inside the sleeping bag. When we've completed stuffing the bag into the compression sack, start to pull the compression straps. This pushes the air out of the sleeping bag and makes a smaller size inside the bag. Then we get that and that's the first item that goes into the bag. Right down the bottom. The next item we have here is the bivy bag. A bivy bag is a waterproof breathable bag that goes over the top of your sleeping bag for when you're sleeping out in the open. In this case I've got a full Gore-Tex bivy bag because you need to have a breathable material. If you didn't have breathable material you would end up with a very wet sleeping bag in the morning. So this is a very simple sack but it works very effectively for sleeping in the open. Again. I stuff this into the bag.
And when you complete it, this goes into the backpack, right down next to the sleeping bag, to really fill the bottom compartment of the pack. You want to make sure that that's really compressed, nice and tight. The next item, as you'll see, that we're putting all the sleeping gear in the bottom first, because we anticipate that that's going to be the thing that we need last. Here I've got Thermarest. This is a sleeping pad, inflatable. Now this is a lightweight Thermarest. There are many different types of Thermarest. Some of them are very thick and heavy, beautiful for staying in a base camp. But as far as mountaineering in New Zealand, where you want to go light, you want to get the lightest one possible. This is a three quarter length guide light Thermarest, and ideal for what we do here in New Zealand mountains. It operates by opening the valve at the end and over a period of time the foam that's inside this mat expands and it draws air into it. Now that works most of the time but in reality we do tend to have to blow these up. To complete our sleeping system we use a closed cell foam pad. Some of these are rolls but in this case this is a concertina. This will go actually underneath at therma rest when we're sleeping. Now this may seem like overkill, but when you're sleeping on the snow, these two layers of insulation keep you nice and warm. The beauty of having the closed cell foam pad is that if you do get a hole in your lightweight therma rest, then at least you still have some good insulation. Once you've taken all the air out of it, you close the valve and that stops more air getting into the bag. Again, that goes right down the bottom of the pack, squeeze it in there. The foam mat we'll end up putting on the pack later on. So we're going to talk about a base layer for a start. We want to have a long sleeve, high collar, zip upper layer. So that's going to be a polypropylene or a wool blend. So taking a couple of those on a trip into the mountains is a good idea. When you get cold, you can actually always just put on another one of those layers. Base layer on the lower part of your body can either be a pair of specially designed mountain pants. These come in different weights from a lighter weight that we'd use in the middle of summer and warmer temperatures through to a heavier weight that we might use in the winter time that just gives us a little bit more insulation. Now you can decide which one you want to bring with you. It depends a little bit on your body temperature. Some people even wear a polypropylene or wool base layer underneath. Another option for, base, for your base layer or your main layer on the lower part of your body is a pair of fleece pants. And these are often just a very simple fleece as long as they fit well and nice and warm. In the winter time, I will tend to probably use these a little bit more than I would in the summer. It's also good to have some sort of mid-layer, depending on the temperature at the time. Now there are options such as these uh, vest, which is a very nice layer to give a little bit more insulation, or that can extend into a windshirt, which is effectively a lightly insulated windproof uh, jacket that can be used instead of a fleece jacket. The other option, of course, is your traditional fleece jacket. They must have a full zip. You don't want to have a pullover type jacket because you'll end up uh, overheating and not be able to regulate your temperature. On a hot day, out on the glacier, you need a glacier shirt. Now this is just a basic cotton shirt, long sleeves, with a collar, because the sun is really blitzing down on you out there and you want to actually have something that uh, you can stay cool in while you're climbing. Okay, so for the purposes of this exercise, I'm actually going to remove some of these items and I'm going to pack some of them in my bag and I'm also going to keep some out that I'm actually going to wear when I do go into the mountains. When we leave the valley floor and head off into the mountains, sometimes by aircraft access, we're sometimes going to go into a very cold environment straight away. We must make sure that we're wearing the right clothing. So I'll be wearing a base layer. The other one I'm going to put away in a stuff bag. It's good to have a bunch of really nice, lightweight, but rather large stuff bags of different colours so that you can actually find your gear when you need it in the hills. I'm going to be wearing the lightweight pants on this trip, so I'm going to leave the heavier weight ones behind. I'm going to use my vest as my 
mid-weight layer, but I don't think I'll need that straight away, so I'll put that away. But I will take a warm layer so that when I get up there I can quickly put it on. And just for the colder nights, I'm going to have my fleece jacket as well, and I'll have that with me. My glacier shirt, I'll put in here. And I'm going to put the rest of it in the stuff bag in my backpack. And you can see that just by having individual items put into your pack, it could be chaos in no time at all. Stuff bags are a very good way to organise your equipment. It means when you pull it out, it doesn't just fall out all over the place. And in order to keep my pack being packed properly, it's a very good idea to stuff it down because I've got quite a lot still to put into it. And if I just place it gently in there, I'm not going to have room for everything. Now we're going to move on to shell clothing. This is the outer layer, the waterproof and windproof layer. First of all, we're going to look at a jacket. This is a Gore-Tex jacket. The features that we're looking for is a full zip down the front. Again, we want to be able to ventilate. We want to have pockets that are accessible when we're wearing a harness and a backpack, and this perfectly enables us to have a couple of different options. The other features that we really need are a good hood. Uh, when you're out there in bad weather and there's a storm going on, you need to be able to cinch your hood up and pull it tight. As part of that feature, you need to be able to pull the hood tighter so that it comes up over your head and out of your eyes. And then with the sleeves, this jacket has got a lovely underarm zip so that when it does get quite warm you can ventilate and cinching ability around your wrists. I'll keep my Gore-Tex jacket close by for when I do go straight into the mountains because that's going to be near the top of my pack. Now other options if you want to go more lightweight is a very lightweight breathable waterproof material uh, such as this jacket has. Now that's going to depend a little bit which jacket you decide to take depending on what the weather forecast is. On shorter lighter trips where I know there's going to be great weather but there might be some wind a jacket like this is absolutely perfect. We're going to talk about overpants because that's our other main windproof, waterproof shell layer. There are various options with overpants again, just as there is with jackets. There's a heavier Gore-Tex type that have a feature that's all very important, which is the full length zip up the side of the leg. This enables us to take our overpants off if we're out on the glacier without having to take our boots and crampons off. If you don't have full side zips, you don't really want to have those overpants up in the mountains. These are the type of overpants that I'd wear in the winter and stormy conditions where I need that extra security of a good strong material. Otherwise, I might take a lighter overpant like this one, which again is a thinner, lighter material. It's still got full length side zips because we still need to be able to take our overpants on and off. During the heat of the day, when things warm up, you just got to be able to whip these off easily. So, for the sakes of this trip, I'm going to take the lighter ones with me and leave the heavier ones for another time. Now we're going to have a discussion about gloves. There's so many options, you've got to try and work out what to do. My personal preference is just to be able to use a pair of fleece gloves. These are a windproof, wind blocker fleece. Really important to get the right size so that you can actually get your hand into them and they're not too tight because a glove that's too tight will restrict your circulation. On top of that, I really like just to have a simple Gore-Tex shell, one that I can still slide my fleeced glove into and that gives me great protection when the weather turns bad. Other options that some people prefer is a lighter weight glove that they use as a liner glove such as this one. And these liner gloves are very nice for keeping your hands away from cold metal and to keep the sun off actually. So that's another option and you may take these as a spare. It's always good to have a spare set of gloves because if one pair gets wet or you drop one you need to have something else. And another option that I really quite prefer is a leather glove. In the summer in New Zealand or in the spring when things are quite warm a leather glove is just perfect. They're quite robust, they're warm enough, they keep the sun off your hands. So my preference is to have the fleece with the Gore-Tex outer and my leather gloves. Now we're going to talk about one of the most important pieces of equipment that we need in the mountains and that's our boots. Very important that the boots fit you properly and that you've got the right boot for the right activity that you're doing. Now this is a classic boot for climbing New Zealand. It's a leather boot, it's got a fully stiff shank 
It's got crampon attachments on the front and on the back and this is the sort of boot that we'll wear almost all year round in New Zealand. There are lighter weight alternatives available these days. This is a lightweight boot with an integrative gaiter that is part of the boot. Therefore you don't actually need to have a separate gaiter. Now these things are a beautiful lightweight boot and this is going to be the way of the future I'm sure. However, when we're working with these boots we need to have some insoles inside of them because we're spending so much time with these boots we need to be able to ensure that our feet are comfortable. It's important to get the right fit, you don't want to have them too tight and you don't want to have them too loose. I always wear the same weight socks with my boots every time. If you just change your socks to a thicker or a thinner one than you fitted it with, then it's possibly not likely to work. The insoles that I use are a moulded insole and I put them inside the boot on each trip. A snow gaiter is a really important piece of equipment in New Zealand. The main reason is that it stops snow and water and rocks and everything getting into our boots. If we didn't have them and if they didn't fit properly, we'd fill up our boots with water and they'd be soaked. And so if we're away for a week and we've got wet boots, we're going to be very uncomfortable. So it's very important to choose a gaiter that fits your boot and your foot and your leg properly. Features that we're looking for is one with a strap that goes underneath the foot that cinches up and as you can see in a gator like this one it provides a really good waterproof protection around the side it's got a hook that goes over your laces at the front and that holds it in place hats now we're going to talk about our headgear we've got a woolly hat something like a woolen beanie is a good thing to keep us warm there are other options like this one which has got ear flaps I kind of like those especially in bad weather when I know I'm going to have a cold trip, when I'm expecting a bit of, bit of a cold southerly to come through and some snow and terrible weather, I might also take my balaclava. This is a very good way to keep you very warm. And of course, we can't do without our sun hat in the New Zealand mountains. A big wide brimmed hat gives you a lot more protection from the sun than you might get from just a baseball cap. Now lastly, What's very popular with some people is a, is a buff, something that you can actually use in different ways, be it as a face warmer when the weather's bad, or as a headband, or as something else. <laughs> now lastly, a really important thing that I do before I go into the mountains is make sure that I have my gloves and my hat where I know where they are. So I'll get my Gore-Tex jacket, I'll unzip the side pocket and I'll put my hat and gloves in there. And if I'm really onto it, I'll put the appropriate glove in each pocket, zip it up, and that way if it gets cold and I need to find my gear, I know exactly where it is. Now we're going to move on to all of those things that we put in the top pocket of our pack that I talked about. Firstly, a first aid kit a small lightweight first aid kit to be able to deal with blisters and any small emergencies that might occur. So I'll put that into the top pocket of my pack. But because it's one of those things that I'm unlikely to access immediately or all the time, I'll put that in a secondary pocket so it's out of the way. Okay, now I've got a, a map of the, uh, the area that I'm going to go into. I've got myself a compass, a notebook and a pencil. Okay. Other items I'm going to need is toilet paper. It's also a good idea to have some wet wipes for personal hygiene while you're away in the mountains. Now those, because they are so infrequently used, they're definitely going to go in the bottom zipper of this pack. This one that has so many good places to hold things. Now in addition to that, I've got uh, my toothbrush, a little portable toothbrush like you get you know, on an airline or whatever, a little small toothpaste, I've got some duct tape that I have rolled up just for patching ripped clothing, that sort of thing. A marker pen, surprising how often you want to use one of these things. Now, sometimes I'll take a GPS into the mountains with me as well. And this is just in case I need to find my way in bad weather or whatever. Uh, it's not always necessary. 
this is a very small lightweight version uh, GPS. So I'll put that away in here as well in addition to my Leatherman tool. Now this is a bit heavy maybe but it's always good to have a knife or some sort of tool that you can use for doing repairs. I find this particularly handy. And because I'm putting it away in this little pouch it means that I, just, I don't have too much stuff just floating around inside my top pocket that might fall out every time I open it. So that again is going to go out of sight in the bottom pocket. Okay, so we need a headlamp. We need to have a good headlamp with uh, alkaline batteries, fresh batteries before you go into the mountains that will be sufficiently strong to see quite a long distance and this particular headlamp is, is very good for that. So that goes where I can find it easily. I don't want to bury that in the bottom of my pack because if it gets dark and I can't find it I'm going to have more troubles. So sunglasses, we need to have a good dark lens sunglass one that does wrap around and give you good protection. I don't think you need to go as far as getting sunglasses with uh, side flaps, that sort of thing, because sometimes they can actually make you fog up. As long as you've got good coverage, good protection, often a retaining strap, then that can be good enough. You want to make sure that light isn't able to get in underneath. It's good to have a little bit of sustenance close by. Now, the goo, which is a carbohydrate gel, or the uh, solid version, very good to have these particularly handy. Now again, that's one of those things that it's worth keeping in your jacket pocket so that if you start to get a bit hungry, you've got something to eat that can sustain your energy straight away. One of the biggest problems we have getting tired of the mountains is because we don't eat enough because we're too busy or working too hard. Having good access to food in your pockets is the way forward. So I put some in my jacket, I put some in the top of my pack. I'm also carrying some electrolyte tablets. This particular variety you drop into a litre of water and you get good electrolytes in your, in your drink. This replaces salts and other minerals that we lose through sweating a lot when we're off in the mountains. So I'll have some of those close by as well so that every time I refill the water bottle I've got them handy. Now last thing that goes on top of my pack is my sunblock. We get a lot of solar radiation in New Zealand and we're always trying to cover up and protect ourselves. If we forget for some period of time we're out there and we're climbing, we get sunburned, it takes a long time to recover. So being able to cover yourself up with a, a high rated sunblock, a 30 or a 50 or whatever is the way forward. And of course a little bit of lip gloss for those special moments. A few more incidentals that we have to take along with us. Spare socks, some spare underwear, a pair of shorts for when we're walking in or walking out on a warm valley. And again, I put those into a stuff sack so that they're uh, accessible and easily managed. Jam those up nice and tight. I'll also take along an old set of Crocs or maybe some running shoes for around the hut. We have to take something to eat with, a knife, bowl, spoon, I'll take a Lexan bowl, it won't break, a nice big coffee cup, that way when you're having a brew you get a good nice big hit, and of course something that you can eat with. In this case I've got a spork, which is a spoon and a fork, very handy. Again, these are in a container that enable me to keep it organised and all in one place because I'm not going to be using that for quite some time, that'll go down to the bottom of my pack as well. Uh, sometimes a pee bottle is a handy thing, one and a half litres is better than one as you find out after a big night. And of course your water bottles to hydrate you during the day. A water bottle needs to have a wide mouth so that you could get snow and water and all those sorts of things in a narrow opening in your bottle will often freeze before anything else. These very solid Nalgene bottles are probably the one to get because when you put them on your mouth and uh, as opposed to a metal bottle they're not going to stick to your lips and they've got a very secure lid so they won't leak when they're done up tight. Often we'll fill these up before we go into the mountains and actually have them in our pack if we're flying in or accessing that way. Very important that we drink as much water as we can around four to five litres a day when we're out there working really hard in the mountain environment.
Okay, now we're going to move on to the technical gear, and these are the items that we'll have on the outside of our body, our ice axes, our crampons, and our harness and helmet. First we'll look at helmets. We've got two options here, one's a hard shell helmet, another one is a slightly lighter weight, softer helmet uh, that has got a good insulating qualities. The issue with these helmets is that they can break easily if you have them in your pack. You've got to be a lot more careful with them. If they get crushed or whatever, the helmet can break. But they're also a very nice helmet to wear because they are so light. It's certainly my preference to carry and wear one of these. We have our harness as well. And unlike maybe some rock climbing harnesses, a feature that's important for a mountaineering harness is to have adjustable leg loops. And this is because we might be wearing different layers of clothing at different times, and so therefore we'll need to be able to adjust uh, our legs a little tighter or looser. This particular harness has got a strap that just does up and doesn't come completely undone, so it's a little bit idiot proof. So I've also put a leash onto this for clipping into anchors with a screw gate carabiner. I have on my harness, I've got three screw gate carabiners, I've got two prussics. I've got a little rescue device here called a tie block. I've got some spear slings and some snack gate carabiners. Another item that's quite important to have in the mountains is a set of snow goggles. These are just ski goggles. Sometimes I'll take them, other times I won't. It'll depend on the weather forecast. Certainly in the winter time and times where I know the weather's going to be a little bit inclement, I'll have my goggles with me because there's nothing better in a storm than having a nice set of goggles that have got the right sort of lens for seeing in, in bad weather. It's also a very good backup in case you lose or break your glasses. Very important that when you're transporting these you don't just jam them in your pack because they could break very easily. I tend to put mine inside my helmet and that way I know that they're protected when they're inside my pack. Moving on to our hardware, we've got a set of crampons an ice axe with a leash and an ice hammer and for some of us trekking poles these are lightweight carbon trekking poles they're very helpful for when you're doing long walkouts long descents downhill what we're going to do next is we're going to actually pack up our pack complete the process put the ice tools and everything on the outside of the pack and we're ready to go because I don't need my harness straight away that's going in So now we're going to put our ice tools, our crampons and our ski poles on the outside of our pack. We use the loops down here for putting the ice tool in. The picks we tend to put towards the centre so they don't stick out the side and jab someone. Put them down and fold them up. Same with the ice axe. Put that on, fold it up, and then we can hook that over there. Pull that tight. This particular pack has a crampon holder in the back. Now with our crampons we want to have them point to point. Naturally we don't want to have the points jamming in to everything. I tend to get the straps. Fold them around the crampon, tie them up into a bit of a bundle, and then they can actually go down into the crampon restraining area, and I can even clip them in so they don't disappear. You don't want to have your equipment being able to fall off your pack if you bend over or whatever. My ski poles, if I'm not using them, and secure them down the side of the pack either by sliding them down or by clipping them directly on and 
Okay, looks like I'm ready to go. Put the pack on and now I can head off into the mountains.